Good day, sir. Good day, classmates. So for today's topic, we have here research ethics. Now, what is research ethics? Research ethics are moral principles that guide researchers to conduct and report research without exception or intention to harm the participants of the study or members of the society as a whole, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Research ethics is closely related to the ethical principles of social responsibility, like the accountability, transparency, ethical behavior, respect for stakeholders' interests, the respect for the rule of law, the respect for international norms of behavior, and the respect for human rights. Meaning, researchers should be held accountable on the research and that the research they have conducted must be transparent and that they must showcase an ethical behavior in conducting their research. This research covers a wide context of working with people, so the researchers risk a task not only to gain confidence in the respondents' eyes to receive reliable data, but also to ensure the transparency of the research. There are actually three basic principles among those generally accepted in our cultural tradition are particularly relevant to the ethics of research involving human subjects. We have here the principle of respect of persons, beneficence, and justice. These principles are considered to be universal, meaning they apply everywhere in the world. These principles do not have national, cultural, legal, or economic boundaries. Everyone involved in human research studies should understand and follow these principles. Although these principles are universal, the availability of the resources needed to maintain these principles throughout the research or research process is not universal or evenly distributed. For instance, financial resources available to an ethics committee or a community advisory board may be limited. However, these principles should guide the thinking and behavior of all individuals involved in planning, conducting, and sponsoring research that involves human participants, regardless of limitations. Respect for person is one of the fundamental principles in research. It is the recognition of a person as an autonomous, unique, and free individual. It also means that we are recognized that each person has the right and capacity to make her or his own decisions. Respecting a person ensures that dignity is valued. Individuals should be empowered to make free decisions and be given all the information needed to make good decisions. To conduct a research project where some of the potential participants do not have the right or the capacity to make decisions is a violation of research ethics and basic human rights. Community representatives can help recognize the unique decision-making process of individuals and communities and suggest the best ways to empower participants to make voluntary decisions. Beneficence, the principle of beneficence, is from Latin word meaning to do good for the people involved. Do no harm is the minimal standard of this principle. People often use beneficence as a synonym for respect for persons or justice. However, only this principle involves acts of kindness or charity that go beyond strict obligation. The principle of beneficence makes the researcher responsible for the physical, mental, and social well-being of the research participant. Community representatives can provide input to ensure that the benefits to the research participant are optimal while the risk are reduced to a minimum. The commitment to avoid risk or reduce them as much as possible is also referred to as non-maleficence, from the classic medical profession's promise to first do no harm. The risk to a person participating in a research study must be weighed against potential benefits and knowledge to be gained. In addition to benefits and risk to individuals, Recent attention has been given to possible benefits or risk to the communities where the research will be conducted. Justice requires the fair and equal distribution of benefits and risk of participation in a research study. Recruitment and selection of participants must be done in fair and equal manner. Justice forbids exposing one group of people to the risk of the research solely for the benefit of another group. 
Community representatives have the responsibility to ensure that community participation in a research study is justified. Community representatives need to be aware of the need for appropriate protections for research participants. They must pay special attention to the benefits that the participants or their communities will receive as a result of their participation in the research and advise the research team so that incentives offered by the research will not influence the decision to participate. The principle of justice enables special protections for vulnerables. Justice do not permit using vulnerable groups such as low-resource persons as research participants for the exclusive benefit of more privileged groups. Researchers must work for the well-being of populations that participate in their studies. These principles were developed to provide guidance and ensure that the well-being of each participant is always considered. Community representatives should understand this research research ethics principles and how to apply them in their communities. There are actually many organizations like the Committee on Publication Ethics dedicated to promoting ethics in scientific research. These organizations agree that ethics is not an afterthought or side note to the research study. It is an integral aspect of research that needs to remain at the forefront of our work. Now, there are actually several ethical issues in research. We have here the validity, the voluntary participation and consent, the sampling, the confidentiality, and the risk of harm. The validity or issue on validity. The research design must address specific research questions, and the conclusions of the study must correlate to the questions posed and the results. Also, Research ethics demands that the methods used must relate specifically to the research questions. As to voluntary participation and consent, an individual should at no point feel any coercion to participate in a study. This includes any type of persuasion or deception in attempting to gain an individual's trust. Informed consent states that an individual must give their explicit consent to participate in the study. Informed consent states that an individual must give their explicit consent to participate in the study. You can think of consent form as an agreement of trust between the researcher and the participants. So sampling, sampling is the first step in research design. You will need to explain why you want a particular group of participants. You will have to explain why you left out certain people or groups. In addition, if your sample includes children or special needs individuals, you will have additional requirements to address like parental permission or parental consent. And then we have confidentiality. The third ethics principles of the Economic and Research Council states that the confidentiality of the information supplied by research subjects and the anonymity of respondent must be respected. However, sometimes confidentiality is limited. For example, if a participant is at risk of harm, then we must protect them. This might require releasing confidential information. Now, risk of harm. We should do everything in our power to protect study participants. For this, we should focus on the risk to benefit ratio. If possible risk outweigh the benefits, then we should abandon or redesign the study. Risk of harm also requires us to measure the risk to benefit ratio as the study progresses. We know there are numerous research methods. However, when it comes to ethical considerations, some key questions can help us find the right approach for our studies. So first question, which method most effectively fit the aims of research? Meaning, we should use the best method in order to effectively conclude a research. And then second question, what are the strengths and restrictions of particular method? You have to know the pros and cons of using those research methods or method. As to the third question, are there potential risks when using a particular research method? Of course, we have to identify the risk in using such method in order to mitigate the impact that it will cause in your study or research. 
research ethics matter for scientific integrity, human rights and dignity, and collaboration between science and society. These principles make sure that participation in studies is voluntary, informed, and safe for research subjects. Scientific integrity is the condition resulting from adherence to professional values and practices when conducting, reporting, and applying the results of scientific activities that ensures objectivity, clarity, and reproducibility, and that provides insulation from bias, fabrication, falsification, plagiarism, inappropriate influence, political interference, censorship, and inadequate procedural and information security. In different sources, special attention is paid to human dignity safety. Respect for human dignity is the most important ethical principle underlying the scientific research. In different sources, special attention is paid to human dignity safety. Respect for human dignity is the most important ethical principle underlying the scientific research ethics and the purpose of which is to protect the individual's interest and the physical, psychological, and cultural integrity. This in turn reflects a number of important ethical principles which should underpin all research with human beings. The scientific study when the object is people is based on a voluntary basis, is carried out without human dignity, humiliation, and respect for fundamental human rights. The findings of such study must remain anonymous and has to be used only for research purposes. This is the standard and this is the standard formed in the international scientific community that Smith presents by recommending to follow the rules of consent based on information. The consent process carried out discreetly ensures that the entities are involved in the study on a voluntary basis and are aware of the potential risk and benefits. According to this principle, the researchers undertake to inform the participants about the research aim, the expected duration and procedures, the participants' right to refuse to participate, and the right to withdraw from the study after it has started. Of course, there are uh, possible consequences and so those participants must also be informed of doing such actions. Factors likely to influence the participants' willingness to participate such as the possible risk, the side effects or inconvenience, any of the expected benefits of the research, confidentiality limits such as data coding, destruction, storage and sharing rules, and cases where confidentiality will be broken, incentives for participants, other people that could be conducted in case of confusion by participants who have questions. It is also proposed to consider the likelihood and size of benefits and damage, reminding the subjects that their participation is voluntary. And these are the list of characteristics that a researcher must observe in doing a research and in observance to the principle of ethical research. We have here, honesty. It is a must to achieve honesty in all science-related communication. This researcher must honestly present information on the data, results, research methods, and procedures and publication status. It is prohibited to falsify and distort the data, to deceive colleagues, agencies aiding grants, or the public. And then we have objectivity. Partiality should be avoided in the formulation of the research stages plan, analyzing and interpreting data, as well as evaluating the work of colleagues, recruiting the staff, writing applications for the award of grants, giving expert testimony, and other aspects of the scientific research where objectivity is essential. It is recommended to try to avoid partiality and self-deception. The researcher must disclose any personal or financial interest that might influence the scientific research. And then we have morality. The researcher must comply with the promises and agreements, be honest and seek the sustainability of thoughts and actions. And then prudence. The researcher must avoid careless errors and omissions. It is important to evaluate carefully and critically both own and colleagues' work. 
it is proposed to collect or systemize good research-related activity like data collection, planning research stages, and correspondence with agencies and journals. And then openness. The researcher must share the data, ideas, tools, and resources, be open to criticism and new ideas. And then respect for intellectual property. The researcher must respect patents, copyright rights, and other forms of intellectual property, not to use unpublished research data, methods, or results without permission, quote where you must cite and thank properly for the help in research. It is strictly forbidden for the researcher to plagiarize. And then we have confidentiality. The investigator must save confidential information such as articles submitted for publication, records of employees, professional or military secrets, and the records of patients' health stories. And then responsible publication. The researcher should publicize the results of the research for the sake of research and scientific research and not for the benefit of his career. The researcher should avoid unnecessary publication or republication. And then responsible management. The researcher should help educate students, guide and advise them in order of their well-being and allowing themselves to make decisions. And then respect for colleagues. The researcher must respect his or her colleagues and deal with them honestly. And then social responsibility. The researcher must promote social welfare and try to avoid harm or reduce it through research, public education, and advocacy activities. And then anti-discrimination. The researcher must avoid discrimination against students or colleagues of sex, race, nationality, or other factors unrelated to scientific excellence and honesty. Competence. The researcher must maintain and improve own professional competence through lifelong learning and take measures to promote competence in science. Legitimacy. The researcher must have knowledge of relevant laws for his or her work as well as institutional and government policies and comply with them. And then, security of people involved in scientific research. Conducting scientific research with human beings, one must strive to minimize the damage and the risk and maximize the benefit. The researcher must respect human dignity, privacy, and autonomy. The researcher must take special precautions working with vulnerable populations and seek a fair distribution of the research benefits and burdens. And that concludes my report on ethical research.